tonight's hobby enhancement is my last splash of the single malt yoichi. It served me well. G'day, my name's Chris, and welcome to the continuing adventures of rehabilitating the Dark Elves. Well, now that I've had a uh, decent battle, uh, it's time to get back to the painting and uh, have a crack at something a bit different. Uh, you might recall before I did a bunch of, uh, here, uh, a bunch of crossbow, uh, I've got some hydras and some, uh, that's the casualty pile from the last game, uh, and um, Corsairs, and I uh, recently painted up uh, these bad boys, and an assassin. And we had a game and I learnt a thing or two. And I thought, well, let's paint up something different that might come in useful. Well, the first thing I need is more rank and file. So these are witch elves. Probably about 6th edition thereabouts. Pretty sure this is the last sort that they did in metal before they uh, shifted to fine cast and then the plastic. So these need a bit of patching up. They need to be stripped down. Some of them will need rebasing. Fortunately, I found an old stash of bases, so that should be right. While we're at it, we'll do another mage. I found this one lying around. Doesn't need much, just to tidy up and an undercoat, so that'll add a bit of magical whoop de doo to the whole show. And over here, shades. Metal shades. They should scrub up nicely and um, add a bit of character. And I figure I need something like this, particularly until I get off my butt and find some uh, Dark Riders. Because I've had a spot of bother with things like bolt throwers that I had no reply for, apart from magic. And then there's, um, well, there's bloody goblin ball and chain fanatics that cause me a bit of bother, so I'll probably need to uh, have something that can run interference in enemy army, so I'll do that lot. So there's 30 of the Witch Elves. It's a big unit actually, but they're mostly skin, so they probably won't take that long to paint. Which I'll probably regret now that I've said that. Uh, there's only six shades, so they're all right. And I'm gonna do another Assassin because I've noticed that my rehabilitated Dark Hills don't have a lot of actual fighting characters in them. Uh, just for whatever reason, the bits and pieces that I've collected uh, secondhand uh, just didn't have many Dreadlords or anything like that. So, Assassins are actually pretty good. And we found out in the last game that having only one of them hidden in a unit that might not get into combat wasn't the most effective uh, combo, so I'll do up a second one and uh, just have that extra level of nasty surprise in the next game we play. So, next up, tearing all these buggers off their bases and sticking them in a pot of metho. Toxic sludge. I reckon that'll need. Oh shit. <laughs> More toxic sludge. Oh, that wasn't very smart. Oh well. <clears throat> and now for the truck of the metal. All mostly debased, apart from the one that wouldn't come off. And we'll get back to that in a few days. Hopefully without spilling more methylated spirits all over the fucking garage. There we go, lovely. And after another obscenely large amount of time, I've finally finished this lot. <coughs> it took me about six months, uh, although in my defense, that six months was punctuated by things like um, Acquiring and painting three fucking air forces for a um, World War II naval game. Um, pumping out uh, another unit of uh, some vehicle or another for the uh, World War Three Cold War game. And some other malarkey. And Christmas. But anyway, we got there. So what we have here is the 
25 Dark uh, Elf uh, Witch Elves, uh, the Sorceress, and the uh, Assassin. Uh, you'll note there are no shades because whatever the hell those things were varnished with, it doesn't come off. So they're still buried in a bottle of metho. Uh, I'll probably revisit those at some point and have a swing with them again. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with those. I may just have to paint over the top and accept a uh, yeah, rather piss poor level of uh, detail in the sculpts. As for the witch elves, um, they're a bit of an experiment. Most of which worked, some of which didn't. Um, I'll do the easy bit first. This, this guy worked all right. Focus, come on, come on, you can do it. There we go. So much the same as the other one. Uh, you know, three tone or four tone leather. Black, I've done a basic dry brush job just to bring out the texture of the cloak. Weapons are just, uh, well, they're three tone. They're base coat of a dark metal uh, belt gun or whatever it is. Uh, ink wash, dry brush with the bolt again, and then a more silver colour of the top. Skin tones, I think I'm only doing a uh, base colour, highlight wash, and highlight over the top again. And the yellow is basically just the yellow with the uh, brown wash. And um, I used to do a brown wash, I did a black one for the uh, the knights, which I have to do for the other knights for consistency, but Generally do a brown wash and just seems to be more realistic, I suppose, if you know such a term can be applied to dark elf assassins. Uh I know this guy's alright. To understand it, nothing special. He'll compliment the other guy, create a few more rude surprises for when uh well we have a straight up nearly. Then we have the mage, which is a good example of what went right and wrong for the witch elves. Um, so this is a character I've used the yellow for the accent colour again. Uh, and a bit of the gold. Uh, look, most of the skin tones turned out pretty good on this. I did have a problem with the face, I fucked something up. And when I went to patch it up, the highlight came out wrong, and it does look a little bit like some of the... Uh, Younger clubbers, and well, actually, kind of reminds me of a former childcare worker that uh, was supposedly looking after my boy, in that it's caked on the makeup a little bit thick. Other than that, though, <coughs> skin tones turned out about what they're supposed to be. Uh, same deal with the washes on the cloak, the level of layers on the metal, my stunning inability to keep this in focus. Um, now the hair, that's the bit I've got to talk about. That was the experiment, and I did them all the same way, so they've all got the same pros and cons. You might note that the highlights are in some wrong places on some of this. Now what I did was, I started off with the orange hair, I wanted them all to have like a um, henna red type of hair. Old fashioned witch of style. And um, the orange is fine. Seems to have accrued a few other hairs along the way. Might be some static flock in there. Uh, then I used a very old ink wash that I had lying around. Games Workshop ink wash. It probably dates back 20 odd years. I probably should have considered whether that was a dumb idea. I've got no idea what the shelf life is on this shit. But I went ahead and used it anyway. Slopped it all over them. Then discovered two things. Uh, one is that it doesn't just run into the crevices. Sometimes it just cakes on top and turns into a glaze rather than running into cracks like an ink. And the other thing is you can't dry brush over this shit. So that's a problem which afflicts the whole unit. It does create something of a unique look in the, well, <laughs> It's not necessarily a good look, but you don't get this look a lot. Maybe a reason for that. Um, I'm still okay with it. I can live with it. 
Other people may disagree, won't win me any awards, but then again, the idea of the time is not to win awards, it's to get crap that was in no shape for anything whatsoever and turn it into something that looks okay on the tabletop and I can have a good fight with without being embarrassed. So from that point of view, it's okay. Now with my excuses made, time for another swig of the, what's left of the Yoichi. Uh, expensive Japanese whiskey. Now, for the Witchells themselves, I'll put this guy over here to converse with she who wears too much Chanel. Um, the skin tone has turned out okay, but I've had a lot of practice doing those over the years. Uh, for the instruments, I'm already testing. I've done this on some of the other figures already. I'm road testing a look where it's basically copper, or bronze maybe, I think copper, and I'm using a green wash because when the stuff gets oxygenated, basically instead of a red rust, it comes out green. And part of the reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to do a larger item in the army later, and I'm going to use the same sort of... Uh, look on that big piece and that'll be a centerpiece item so you will get some uh, 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 consistency in the uh, visual narrative now you might notice the colors are a little different on these witch elves and it sort of goes hand in hand with the whole thing of this army being a bit more earthy and gritty than a lot of the uh, um, full-on fantasy look that you get in games workshop these days so the same leather uh, it's not a lot of leather on this, just look at the shoulder pads, you can see it's the same brown that I've used elsewhere. The same bog standard black for the actual clothing, so they've got the one big long run of black cloth for the whole army. Let's see if we can get some leather on the boots there at the back. And even though the witch elves are basically a cult unit, which would be attired themselves, I wanted uh, some visual consistency with the rest of the um, army. And it's a different look. I don't think it's necessarily better or worse than the other ways of doing it, but it'll get that consistency look. And the differentiation between the witch elves and the other units will come mainly from the hair. Uh, one thing I did do differently for these people was I did their uh, tabards, whatever those are, loincloths maybe, in red to balance out the red in the hair rather than doing yellow accent colour. And I think that gives the appropriate look for a bunch of witch elves. Uh, for all of the, the sword uh, handles, I've done those in the, uh, the same um, bronze colour. So it's a little different to anything which I've seen done before. It's the same look, which is consistent with the rest of the uh, Dark Elf army. Um... I did find as I was painting these that I was having rather a bit of hobby enhancement in the evening and uh, they may not have been quite as... I'm going to get in the focus, you little silly person. Anyway, what am I going to do? <clears throat> the plane is being distracted by everything else. Let me put the one model up close. There we go. You get focus. So um, I did get to a point God. focus problems, focus problems. I did get to a point where I was getting tired of painting a little nooks and crannies and it was taking too damn long. So there are some things like the earrings I didn't bother to paint over them again after I've thrown the washes over everything. Um, and there are some little nooks and crannies like there's hair ties, for example, on these models. So maybe I'll see little bands that could be theoretically painted a different color in order to um, distinguish those. I did think about doing a metal, then I realized that if I fuck it up, it's very hard to undo because of the way that the hair is done. You can't just 
touch up the hair around the metal bands. So I thought I'll leave them well enough alone. I was secret painting this unit and I didn't want to fuck it all up at a final stage that was unnecessary and would be extremely noticeable if I balls it up. So that's why those little fine details are not done. And frankly, I'm not going to see it on the tabletop anyway. So that's it. That's 25 which I was done. I had this insane idea at the start of painting these that uh, it would be fairly quick because they're mostly skin. And that turns out to be complete and utter bullshit. Because uh, they're not mostly skin. They are a whole blended mass of different items. Um, only a small amount of which is skin at the end of the day, which I suppose given our adolescent fantasies of back in the 90s when I first encountered these things, um, may have been just ever so slightly disappointing. Um, I think whoever sculpted them was definitely a bum man more than a tits man. Uh, I'll just turn this unit around, you'll see what I mean. The only point on the sculpts I've noticed over the years, see, look at that, that's, that's, it's definitely sculpted by an ass man. And I don't know if that's a legal decision based on what they thought they could get away with uh, in the PG market at the time, or whether it was just the personal taste of the art director, but that's the way they turned out. Um, but I've noticed in the sculpts, they've become more and more um, anatomically correct if you compare these witch elves to, say, this mage, uh, this one will do, this is actually one of the better ones, one of the better sculpts. There's a much more of a ripped 21st century uh, gym bod going on with the mage than what there is with the witch elf. Uh, which was, I think these are the last generation of metal sculpts they did before they went into fine cast, which is basically the, the metal sculpts done in plastic. And then on the computer generated design stuff that then became uh, all of the injection molding for the actual sprue plastic uh, figures. And sprue plastic figures, they're, they're done a different way. They've, they've got a different technology to how they make the figures. And they come out with this much more defined, anatomically correct look as compared to the hand sculpted uh, jobby on the metal figures. Uh, and there's a bit of each to their own. I mean, there's a few generations of figures in this army and they've all got their unique charms. You know, I think the, uh, the old hammer look has definitely got a certain character to it and that character has shifted between iterations of figures to the modern dynamic. Uh, it's probably about eight or 10 years difference between this, that metal figure and the plastic mage. Uh, and I like both. Um, I think they both have the charms and I think they work well enough in an army together, but it's always very interesting to see the evolution of the technology and the evolution of the style that goes with it. But anyway, look, that's, that's it. That's the unit done. Um, I now have two decent sized infantry units for melee, two small shooter units, uh, two big monsters, two mages, and two assassins. So it's, it's looking pretty balanced now. Um, there's a few other odds and ends I've got tucked away waiting to happen, and I'll have to think of what to do next. But the one thing I'm definitely working on, and I've just started on, is a standard bearer. Because the Achilles heel of this army right now is the complete and utter lack of a reroll for any sort of break test. So we'll remedy that. And something else, I don't know what yet, but I'll uh, check in God knows how long from now uh, with, uh, with an update on that, and hopefully we'll get a game or two in between now and then. Anyway, thanks for watching. Feel free to like, subscribe, comment, tell me what the hell I did horribly wrong with my use of 20-year-old glaze on the hair, and uh, time to call it a night.